In this video, we'll explore how we can create a door window assembly comprising a number of different grids with different infills and also different divisions. So we'll explore those concepts. It's worth noting that one can find lots of information on creating and editing DWAs within the help files within Caddy. So everything from the grid layout through the divisions there, infills, frames, mullions, and so on, through to the inclusion of nested grids and the, the basic makeup of the DWA objects. A good place to start in creating any DWA is to sketch out what your intentions are for the overall finished object. This could be something as simple as a sketch on a piece of paper with some noted sizes, or maybe even drawing it out in two dimensions in CADI. So analyzing our finished DWA, we have an outer frame, which is broken down in a grid arrangement with a 300 mil offset from the base of our grid to give us two cells. The uppermost cell of which is then broken down further with another manual grid with a thousand millimeter offset from one end. And then one of those cells is then broken down yet again to give us two fixed cells. So we have our primary grid. We have a window inserted into the one of the cells of that first grid, a window inserted into one of the cells of the second grid, and then the final grid providing two cells into which the window hoppers are inserted. Having decided upon a configuration for our DWA, let's create it. From within the build tools from Caddy's default architectural menu, you'll see we have a DWA insertion. So we'll insert the DWA. Uh, we only have standard in here. There are no other styles for DWAs at present. We're not going to insert it in a wall, so the head height in this particular instance is irrelevant, but the height and the width will play a part. Choosing center and then OK, but just before we leave this dialog, you'll see that we have the ability to choose from a number of presets. So these are pre-configured settings, giving different options for breaking the DWA into two, three, and so on. But we're going to stick with the standard DWA here that is created, so we'll OK that. And it asks us to indicate the position for the outer face of the window assembly. Well, I'm here located at the origin, I could place it anywhere, but I just press enter. And here we can click yes to create a DWA not linked to any wall. So we'll move our DWA up into the center of our screen, or we could even use one of the 3D views from the 3D view toolbar to look at our DWA from the front and side. We also have different rendering options, from with wireframe, for instance, or hidden line, or the 3D wireframe that we'll use here. Having created our DWA, we don't wish to create any more, so we can right click and choose a board or choose a board from the top menu there as well. We place this DWA called standard in our drawing. Now, if we wish to introduce that into any other drawing, we would quite naturally want it to be the new DWA that we create rather than just the standard one. So from the right click context sensitive menu, we'll choose the assembly dot 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 option. We can copy this DWA and assign it a new name. So here, rather than adopting any uh, naming conventions, I'll simply call it DWA dot tutorial and we'll OK that. So we've now assigned this as dwa.tutorial within our drawing, so we have two styles within there, and we can see that if we go into the DWA insertion tool here. We now wish to amend this style, so make it vary from the standard. So we'll select it once again and right click, and we'll go for this time the edit door window assembly. Now we can make this grid a little wider so we can see so we can see exactly what the DWA looks like so we'll go to a quick view here as well so here's our, our DWA in a, a live drawing window here and if we just set our view to be consistent now we can just zoom out on that as well because it's a live drawing so we have our various tabs across the top. So 
starting at the design rules, we'll see that we have a definition for the number of divisions. So at the moment under divisions, so we have our default division here, and we'll see that it has a fixed number of cells. At this moment in time, the cell count is two. If we change that to three and apply that, then we'll get three equally spaced cells. We also have different options, so we can have a fixed cell dimension, for instance. At the moment, that's set to 100 millimeters, but we could change that to, say, 500 millimeters. Apply that, and we'll see that it changes within our DWA. On top of that, we have the ability, if we're changing the size of our DWA, our overall size, we have the ability to adjust different cells, so we can grow or shrink the different cells, maintaining at least half the chosen dimension if we wish. Then we have the option that we're going to choose here, which is manual. Having chosen manual, we can now define the offsets we wish to introduce. So here we just want the one, so clicking new, we will define our offset as being 300 millimeters, not from the grid top, but from, in this case, the grid bottom. So here's the bottom, so we're choosing 300 millimeters from the bottom of our grid. Now the default infill, that defines what each of these cells is filled with. At the moment, the default infill is a simple panel aligned on the center with a panel thickness of 10. We could change that to 100 and apply that, and it would just change the designation. So we'll change that back to 10 and apply, and we'll see it reverts to that that it was. Coming down to the frame, and here we've decided for our own DWA that we would like to, to modify, the, not the width, which we'll retain at 50, but we'll change the depth to 95. Changing that, we'll see that we get the revised illustration in our quick view window. We can do the same thing with the mullion. So the mullion here, we have a default mullion. For the purposes of this particular DWA, we'll change that to 50 and 95 to mimic the overall frame. You'll also see that we have the ability to use profiles both on frames and mullions. But keeping it simple, so we have our default division here and to make it simpler for the next phase, I'm just going to rename that as horizontal division. So it's still a horizontal grid, still fixed dimension, we're just changing the name of it. To our primary grid, so this tells us how we assign each of the objects that we've created from our design rules, how they're assigned in the grid of our DWA. So for instance, we are splitting the DWA into two according to the horizontal division. We're also having just one type of cell infill at this moment in time, which is the default cell arrangement, which was the, the simple panel infill, and that's assigned to all that are not predefined otherwise. So we need to introduce a different designation in order to do things differently here. And then looking at the cell, we see that we have, uh, at the frame, we see that we have the same frame, both left, right, top, and bottom, and the default mullion is just all that are unassigned. So in other words, that is our default assignment. So we need to introduce another cell. So how do we do that? Well, if we look down at our little cluster of icons here, we can create new cells, we can create new frames, and we can create new mullions, and also delete them too. So we'll create a new cell. And in that cell, so here's our new cell, we can do something different. So to introduce a, a new division in here, we will need to introduce a nested grid. So we can introduce a nested grid there. And you see instantly it updates our illustration of what the DWA will look like by introducing that nested grid. And of course, at the moment, the only grid that we have is that horizontal division. And it's assigned both to the start and the end. So if we choose to say that this is used in only the end, so we'll see that we now have changed that so we have a clear bottom cell and then the top cell is divided into two. But we don't want that divided into two horizontally, we want it divided into two vertically. So going back to our design rules, 
we can create a new division. So our icon at the bottom, create a new division. We will call this vertical division. And we'll say that its orientation is indeed vertical. And we'll choose manual once again. We want the offset to be, in this particular case, 1000 millimeters from the grid end. So we'll apply that, go back to our grid and say that in this new nested grid, so here's the nested grid, we're actually looking then at this nested grid, we'll say that we don't want to employ the horizontal division, we want to employ that newly created vertical division. And there it is, that creates the vertical division, which now gives us the split to give us 1000 millimeters here and then the remainder. So, just to recap, we have a primary grid which is divided into two, and we have a nested grid which takes that top division and subdivides it into a further vertical grid. But looking at this, we'll see that the frames have got very heavy now, and that is because we also have, as well as to the frame assignment in the primary grid, we now have a frame assignment to the subgrid too. So, rather than have that very heavy arrangement, we'll choose in this particular case, and you can see you can choose any options you wish to have non assigned. So that's cleaned that up to, to make it much simpler. But we also need to divide this cell that we have here a further time. And to subdivide this cell further, we can employ another nested grid. Back to our, our cell assignments here, we need to introduce a further cell. So we'll introduce our uh, new cell, and we can say that this is going to be at the end here. And rather than default infill, we will again have a nested grid. So we see that we've now split that into cells as described by our original horizontal and default division. But here we want to split them into a new arrangement. So a new horizontal division, yes but different to our default. We can also remove the additional frames as we did previously. So going back to our design rules, we just create a further division, which we'll call horizontal subdivision. So that will be a horizontal division and we'll have a fixed number of cells, which we'll say is two. Going back to our primary grid, choosing that nested grid which defines this, this section of our DWA here, we'll say that that is in fact not the horizontal division, but this horizontal subdivision. And you will see that we now have our grid arranged, so there's the overall grid, which is the, the primary horizontal one, splitting into two. The new cell assignment, which splits the top cell of our DWA into two vertically, and then splitting that cell further into two. So that gives us our DWA outline. We now need to tailor our DWA to introduce the, the different options for our infills. So we have simple non-opening windows in the bottom and side. We could do them as simple panels, but in this case, we'll do them as windows. And then we have the hopper type windows, which will form the last of our grids. We'll close down the style editor now, and we see the changes now manifesting themselves in our DWA in our drawing. And if we regen, we return to the original colors. Now we saw from the DWA style editor right click here again so just returning to it that within the design rules for our infills we we could have different types of infill so at the moment we have a, a simple panel but we do have the ability to include styles now the styles can be polygons curtain wall styles door styles or window styles so in order to create those window styles we need to now go back to our normal tools and introduce into our drawing the window styles which we'll use within our DWA grid. So here we return to our build tools and the window command to insert a window and we'll start 
with standard. So we'll just OK that. We don't need to worry about the style. It asks us where the position will be. So we'll simply place the window within our, our drawing there. Selecting our window, we can right click and we can go to, as we did with the DWA, copy and apply the window style. So we'll call this picture dot window. Okay, that. So we now have uh, a unique window here, which we can then go and edit the style of. So we have access to our dimensions, for instance. So here we've got 50 by 95, and everything's fine with that. We can just use that as our, our style. But we do want a further window, which will be our hopper style window. So if we simply copy that, so I'll copy it and just place it over here. And then we'll copy and apply the style to that. So we'll call this hopper.window. OK to that. And now if we edit the style of that window, we can change its design rules from a standard picture window, which we had before, into one of the, the options here. So this particular instance will choose the single hopper and you can have the, uh, the quick, quick view of that as well so we can just choose exactly how we, we want that to be and if we go for a, a front view for instance it will show us exactly what we've got. So we've got our different styles so we'll just apply that and close. So this is now a hopper style window. And you'll notice that since we're looking at it in a 3D view, we don't see the, the opening lines. However, if we do look at that in a, in a face on view, we'll see the swing lines for our hopper window. So returning to our, our view, we've created those two windows. In fact, we no longer need those in our drawing far as the visual content so we can simply delete those and we can return to the job of editing our DWA. So editing our door window assembly style so just teasing out the dialogue once again so we can actually use the quick view and see where we we're introducing the different objects and just zoom back out of just a tiny amount. So there we have our, our DWA. So it's back to the design rules. So at the moment we only have a default infill. But if we click on the icon here, we can see that we can create a new infill. So we'll have this as picture window. And we'll say that it is actually a style. And it is a window style and the window style's name is picture window. So that creates the style for us and we can choose where we would like that to be centered. So that's centered at the moment so we'll just leave that as fine as the default and we'll apply that. And we need to create another new assignment too. So this will be a hopper window and this again will be a style and a window style which we'll have as the hopper window but this time we'll assign it to the front of our window because then it will sit at a different location within the DWA frame. Going back to our primary grid having applied this we can see that in our primary grid where we have the simple panel at the moment at the bottom and we can change this to the picture window style that we created just a few moments ago. And you can see that that has inserted that picture window there. Going to our nested grid in the top of the original two panel arrangement, we can say that yes, our default assignment will be for the picture window. And we can see that that's been introduced there. And then going to our new nested grid, 
we want our default infill to be our hopper window which we're assigning to both of them. Close our DWA and hit regen and if we choose maybe a hidden line for instance we can see exactly what we have here. If we would like to tailor our DWA to, to change where the, the windows sit within the depth you'll see that we chose to have our window actually sitting centered on the front of our DWA frame. We could have chosen as we did with the, the picture windows to have them set center to center. So you have the option to change the DWAs and make them as you wish. Having created the DWA, if we just go for a top view, so I'll go for a top view here, we can see the arrangement, so the center and the, the front orientation, but just creating a simple wall now. Just choosing to put on our polar tracking there. We can now introduce that DWA tutorial. So there we have our settings, now we can just introduce it into our wall. So there you have an illustration of how you can create DWAs that comprise any combination you wish of doors, windows and panels collected within a frame using internal mullions too if required, literally representing anything from shop fronts to individual windows. Discover many more Caddy tutorial videos on the Caddy Software channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for frequent news and updates. And why not download your own evaluation copy and try out Caddy for yourself? And whilst you're evaluating, you can get free help and advice via the live support on the website or through the numbers given on screen.